the part. Say, the guy that designed it, aren't Don, you? Don, buying an automobile is considerably more serious business than buying a necktie. I know, but heck, I uh, was... Donald, I have not made a final decision yet. When I decide which of the various cars gives me most of the qualities I want... The qualities I... that you want? Hasn't it always been that way? After all, John, we'll all drive it. Why, of course, dear. That's why I am, uh... That's why you alone can't possibly select a car that will suit all of us. Oh, come, come now, dear. I, I think I've done pretty well in the past. Now, you take our old Busby. You take it. You can have my share of it. The only thing that old crock will pass is telegraph poles. Donald, we are not racing drivers. That Busby was a good economical car. Oh, of course. I couldn't see over the steering wheel. I couldn't shift the gears. And the interior was finished like a chorus girl's apartment. I know, I know, but it did stand up. Yeah, after you had ridden in it five miles, you couldn't sit down. Now, John, this year, let's be sensible. Now, you know how much we can afford to spend. Let's sit down and make out a list of all the things each of us want. Then, you can visit the various showrooms and see which car best suits our requirements. Now, isn't that what you men would call a, uh, um, logical, fundamental procedure? Sure, Mom. That's the idea. How about it, Dad? Don. Splendid idea, Mother. Splendid. A sort of symposium of ideals. <laughs> yes. I suppose so, dear. And now, now my ideal would be, uh, first of all, I would like to have one of... Good afternoon, sir. Is it? I, I, uh... Now, please don't hem and haw, young man. And don't ask me if I came in to look at the new Dodge. Of course I did. And I know it's a pleasant day. At least it was when I started out. And I'm not interested in politics. The only thing that interests me at the moment is an intelligent and factual outline of the qualities and features of your car. Well, nothing would give me more pleasure. We're mighty proud of our new line. Yeah, sure, they all are. Now, I don't mean to seem crotchety. But, young man, I've spent all day in automobile row. I've worn out my feet and my nerves and my patience trying to get the simple facts about the various cars I could afford. And all I seem to get is sales baloney. Facts are what I want, and only facts. And facts are what you shall have, Mr. Uh, Thomas is my name. My name is Hamilton, John Hamilton. And now, Mr. Thomas, I'd be glad to learn about your new car. I want to know all about it. But please indulge a tired mind and limit yourself to facts. Skip the oratory. Uh, oratory, Mr. Hamilton, is not my long suit. And I'm mighty happy that you're interested in a complete view of the new Dodge. The new Dodge isn't a lopsided car. It isn't stinted in some essential features to emphasize some flashy sales point. The new value Dodge is outstanding in every... Now, wait a minute. What did we decide about the baloney? Well, Mr. Hamilton, let's inspect the new Dodge critically. In every feature, and you be the judge. Naturally, your first impression is the beauty of the car. The new Dodge is as smart as tomorrow. Not in just one or two individual features, but in its entire conception. <laughs> Smartness, beauty. Beauty is a matter of opinion. <laughs> true, Mr. Hamilton, very true indeed. Beauty is a matter of your opinion, plus the opinion of everyone who sees your new car. That is why Dodge is preferred to build a car that is conservatively beautiful rather than conspicuously flashy. The new Dodge has graceful styling, but in every line there is good taste. Notice the natural flow of the lines and contours of radiator, fenders, and body. There is a sweep and rhythm to the Dodge design which brings all the various elements into one harmonious ensemble. For example, observe how the headlights are blended into that graceful pattern. The horns are concealed inside these grills. What my boy would call aerodynamics, I suppose. <laughs> yes, of course. As you look at the new Dodge, you know that it's designed for motion, fast motion. And to be really graceful in motion, 
it had to incorporate the same trim, clean lines that are natural in any truly sound slipstream design. I know, I know, but an automobile isn't an airplane. How much seat room did you have to cut out to get this streamlined effect? Not a bit. Well, you haven't cut down on the size of the doors anyway. Well, no indeed, Mr. Hamilton. In fact, the doors on the new Dodge are actually wider than last year's car. Well, it does seem surprisingly roomy. It is surprisingly roomy. Your first glimpse tells you that. In that lounge seat, your posture is as relaxed as in an easy chair. By lowering the floor, Dodge Design permits your feet and legs to rest at a natural angle, instead of sticking out in front of you as in most cars. Well, I suppose I'll have to take your word for that. Oh, no indeed. Now, Mr. Hamilton, if you'll just raise your feet for a moment. There. Now, that's the level of the floor in most cars. Just try and stand. Now, try again. Well, what a difference. Go ahead. Here is another important improvement. The rear seat has been moved forward half a foot so that you don't ride directly over the rear axle, as in most cars. This six inches advantage in seating position is easily worth 12 inches of added wheelbase in terms of riding comfort. Yes, and I suppose you just cut six inches out of the leg room in the rear compartment. Not at all. The leg room remains the same. Dodge gained this added six inches by moving the motor ahead in the frame. That's another important contribution to riding comfort. Why, that's ridiculous. How can moving the motor farther forward possibly affect riding comfort? I'm still sticking to facts. Possibly this explanation will make the point clear. In the old-fashioned design, with a motor a considerable distance behind the front axle, and the rear seat over the rear axle, the center of weight, the pivotal point, is about the center of the vehicle. When the car hits a bump, both front and rear bob up and down like the two ends of a teeter-totter. And <laughs> the rear seat passengers are thrown around like corn in a popper. Now, a great forward step has been achieved by Chrysler Motors and Dodge engineers through redistribution of weight, more scientific, resilient springs, and the application of the Dodge Sway Eliminator. Thus we achieve the amazing new air glide ride. In the new valued Dodge, the engine is moved forward and the rear seat is moved ahead of the rear axle instead of on top of it. This gives a new distribution of weight, which moves the pivotal point forward. As the front wheels hit a bump, the shock is not transmitted to the passengers in the rear seat. For in the new Dodge, they are not sitting at the end of the teeter-totter. The passengers in both front and rear seats are cradled between the axles. An air glide ride is the result. Now, Mr. Hamilton, let's take a look at the engine. You're interested in facts, and here is plenty of evidence of Dodge superiority. You know that Dodge brothers always have built splendid power plants. Why, some of those old Dodges, 12 and 15 years old, are still running. Those engines stand up forever, it seems. The Red Ram engine in the new Dodge has all that traditional dependability and stamina, together with the improvements and refinements of years of progress in power plant designing. Why, we uh, have... Just a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's a good thing. Yes, sir, a six. I'm not interested in feeding any extra cylinders. But you can't have real smoothness in a six. At least so I hear. Mr. Hamilton, you not only can expect smoothness from the Dodge Red Ram engine with floating power, you get it. Smoothness that no ordinary engine can match, whether it's an eight or a 12. What do you mean, ordinary engine? I'm referring to the method of motor suspension. Now, let's step over here a minute. You'll be interested in this. 
Mr. Hamilton, every engine, no matter how many cylinders, has vibration. It's the nature of the beast. And it's vibration, rather than number of cylinders, that gives your car the jitters. With floating power, these engine vibrations are entirely absorbed in the floating power engine mountings without being transmitted to the frame, body, and passenger. Oh, phooey. Every car has rubber engine mountings. Now deny that if you can. True, Mr. Hamilton, but not floating power. Merely mounting the engine in rubber does not give floating power. Indeed, mounting the ordinary engine in rubber merely accentuates its vibration because the average engine is mounted in a top-heavy position. But with floating power, the engine is mounted at its center of balance. It oscillates in balance. And that's the only way inherent torque vibration can be effectively subdued. Absolutely all of the vibration is absorbed by the floating power engine mounting. Here is one of the floating power engine mounting. Note the rubber between the two pieces of steel. It is bonded to the metal by a patented process all the king's horses couldn't pull them apart. The rubber absorbs the vibration, and the steel anchors the motor securely to the chassis. What's the horsepower of this engine? 87 horsepower, which gives you the exceptionally high power ratio of one horsepower to every 34 pounds of car weight. After all, horsepower alone is meaningless. It is the ratio of power to weight in the new Dodge that really makes the difference in performance. 87 horsepower. Hmm. Sounds like a lot of expensive power. And that's another pleasant surprise, Mr. Hamilton. The new value Dodge has new economy as well as new style. Although the Dodge motor is stepped up in power this year, it gives you approximately 15 to 20 percent greater economy than last year's Dodge. And by the way, last year's Dodge was a remarkably economical car. Say, you expect me to believe that? You will have to explain and talk fast. Yes, indeed, Mr. Hamilton, with facts. To begin with, Dodge has increased the compression of its engine to 6.5 to 1 ratio, thereby getting more power out of the same amount of fuel. And even with this high compression, you don't have to use premium fuel. The Dodge Red Ram engine, with perfected automatic vacuum spark control, permits the use of regular gasoline. Furthermore, the water circulation in the engine has been so... Now, wait a minute. I can see where increased compression may make a difference. But water circulation, <laughs> that's pretty hard to believe. No, Mr. Hamilton. It is a well-known fact in automotive engineering that greater efficiency in cooling valves and cylinders produces greater power and increased economy. Well, perhaps I can prove my point best by this simple illustration. In most engines, only the upper part of the cylinder is cooled. As a result, after the engine has been running a while, the lower portion of each cylinder expands to such an extent that oil escapes past the piston rings and is lost. Dodge, however, provides full cooling down the full length of the cylinder. Consequently, cylinder wall expansion is uniform through the entire bore. Hmm, yes, uh, I can see where that would result in a big oil saving, especially in high-speed driving. Right. But that's only one of the virtues. The biggest benefit of all is attained through lowering of oil temperature by this extra water circulation. It is a well-known engineering fact that cool oil gives most efficient lubrication, particularly in today's high-speed driving. And through the marked improvement in cylinder cooling, Dodge engineers have succeeded in lowering the oil temperature as much as 50 degrees. What's the result? Just this. All bearings, pistons, Rings and cylinder walls have fresher, liver lubrication every mile you travel. I don't have to tell you what this means in terms of longer engine life and freedom from repairs. Well, young man, if they've made the Dodge engines any longer lived and more dependable than they have been, they ought to run forever. But, uh, <clears throat> go on, go on. Here is a small but important feature of Dodge design. Notice that this piston has four rings. Most manufacturers use only three. And it is easy to see why the Dodge engine, with two compression rings and two oil control rings per cylinder, is more economical both in gasoline and oil, particularly at high speed. Now, to most people, this wouldn't mean much. But inasmuch as you're interested in all the facts, 
you'll appreciate this inconspicuous but important feature of the design of this engine. This is a piece of iron of which motor blocks of the finest quality are made. Try cutting into it with this file. Hmm, that isn't difficult. Now, try filing this little ring. Nope, I can't file it. But what of it? Just this. Cast iron is the most practical material from which to make motor blocks. But this hardened steel ring is infinitely more serviceable for valve seats. So, Dodge provides valve seat inserts of hardened steel in the cast iron motor block, thereby more than doubling the period of mileage between valve grinds and greatly increasing the life of valves and seats. And, as you expect from Dodge, the engine is fitted with an oil filter, air cleaner and carburetor silencer, automatic choke, and a really efficient crankcase ventilation system. Well, uh, I suppose that is if a... Uh... If a fellow wanted to run a radio and a spotlight and a heater, he'd have to buy a new generator and battery, wouldn't he? No, indeed, Mr. Hamilton. The Dodge ventilated generator has been increased in charging output just to take care of those accessories. And the Dodge 15-plate battery is amply capable to meet all your demands. Hmm. That's all right. <laughs> well, uh, I don't suppose any law against me sitting in the driver's seat, is there? Why, certainly not, Mr. Hamilton. I want you to, by all means. Notice that the tools under the front seat are held firmly in place by spring clips. No chance to rattle, yet always convenient. You will find that the new Dodge silent synchro shift transmission is the most easily handled gear shift you've ever driven. It changes silently and instantly. And, of course, the Dodge transmission has silent helical gears in all forward speeds. You can shift from high to second at any speed, easily and silently, any time you want greater pulling power or to utilize the braking effort of the engine on steep downgrades. I'm glad to see you don't have any thumbadiddles sticking out here to rattle and catch your hand when you want to signal and blind you on crossings. It's a lot of poppycock. Oh, I see what you mean. We have a most simple and effective method of draftless ventilation. In cold or rainy weather, when you want ventilation without drafts, you merely run the window up, so. A slight reverse turn and the window glass moves backward. It provides efficient ventilation, can't rattle, can't interfere with your vision when the window is down, and leaves nothing sticking out in your way. In summer, when you want plenty of air, the window goes down entirely, as you can see. You can open the cowl ventilator, and furthermore, if you desire, open the windshield. This simplified ventilation system is another feature which your wife will appreciate. Yes. <laughs> she struggled around for a half an hour with the ventilation gadgets on my daughter's car. Now, Mr. Hamilton, we've covered a number of features of this new Dodge, but we've ignored one entirely. And I'm just a little surprised that you haven't brought it up, because to the careful purchaser of a new car, it is one of the most important considerations of all. Huh? What do you mean? I'm speaking of motoring safety. In this respect, Dodge is just as outstanding as in any of the other features which we have covered. Now, consider for a moment the brakes on a car. The Dodge hydraulic brakes. Oh, Mr. Thomas, I don't think we have to go into that subject. I'll be frank to admit that hydraulics are best. Maybe that's why other manufacturers are coming to them, eh? Yes, indeed. But there are hydraulic brakes, and there are Dodge time-proven hydraulic brakes. Oh, what's the difference? Uh, that's just what I want to show you. Step over here a moment. Sit down, Mr. Hamilton. Now, Mr. Hamilton, in the ordinary style of hydraulic brake, with which some manufacturers are attempting to meet the public demand, the cylinder exerts pressure in one direction only actuating only a part of the brake shoe. Naturally, you can't expect full efficiency from halfway methods. Now, watch the action of this Dodge brake. 
Observe how the cylinder exerts pressure in both directions. And the cylinder actuating the rear shoe is stepped up to exert the more powerful action, to equalize the natural servo action of the front shoe. Obviously, this compensating action assures the most efficient braking. And another thing, the brakes will last longer without relining and take effect evenly because both shoes wear down evenly. Hmm. Well, maybe there's something to that. And Dodge goes the limit by equipping its cars with cast iron and steel brake drums. Brake drums with the strength of steel, yet having braking surface faced with cast iron to provide smoother acting, longer wearing brakes. Okay, okay, I checked with you on that. Sometimes even the best brakes can't prevent an accident. Oh, quite true, Mr. Hamilton. I only wish you might have attended the Century of Progress exposition in Chicago last summer when a Dodge car proved its safety. Down in the Chrysler testing track, a Dodge car was put through a series of the most brutal, punishing tests to which any car could possibly be subjected. One of the first was a brake test that brought the World Fair visitors right out of their seat. After rounding the track at high speed, Barney Oldfield stamped on the brakes, took his hands off the wheel, and came to a dead stop in the space of just a few feet. Another feature of this performance. They demonstrated the value of Dodge's low center of gravity by running at full speed up a ramp that tilted the car to an angle of 45 degrees. Another car might have tipped over, but the Dodge hung on like a cat. Down in the center of this arena, they put those Dodges through a series of leaps that would have demolished a lesser car. At full speed, they dived into the shell holes and leaped into the air on the opposite side, continuing on at full speed. Man, there was a test to break the heart of steel, but those Dodges kept on and on without faltering. Finally, as a climax to their hell driving, one of the pilots was strapped into the seat and started away. Traveling at full speed around the oval, he suddenly swerved into the center, switched the wheel hard over, and purposely turned the car over in a double somersault. The crowd gasped, but a moment later the speed bowl rang with their cheers, for after pushing it back on its wheels, the Dodge drove away in triumph under its own power. Of course, you'll never have an accident like that. <laughs> At least I hope not. But if you should, I hope you have the protection of a Dodge. You know, Mr. Hamilton, that Dodge pioneered the safety all steel body. Steel reinforced with steel, now recognized as the finest in motoring protection. Well, young man, I don't mind telling you you've sold me. Well, that is, Dodge sold me. But, uh... There's just one other thing, sort of a, a personal matter. What's that, Mr. Hamilton? Well, frankly, my wife. I, I think I'd better bring her down here before I buy a car. Oh, oh, no. We'll go get her and take a ride in the new Dodge. <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs>